goes that as our sole starter for oh, today. I was struggling to work it out. I was. <laughs> uh, if you have any other suitably themed songs, we love a theme song here on Late Lunch, especially when it concerns food. Do get in touch, 166177. Uh, we might play your song before the end of the show. We're going to start talking to Georgie in just a moment, but first of all, uh, we've put him on the celebration list, and he could win £25 to spend at ShopRite uh, when we do the draw later this week. But happy birthday to the greatest novelist that the Isle of Man has ever known, who was born on this day in 1853, Hall Kane. I think he might struggle to spend that voucher at ShopRite, but uh, I'm sure someone will spend it for him. Yes, happy birthday, Hall Kane. You, you learned some very interesting facts about Hall Kane when you were looking him up, because he was quite New York, wasn't he? He was, and I must say thank you so much to Culture Vannon, who would just do a wonderful job at pointing out things they like do. this to everybody. But uh, yeah, during his lifetime, he was the best-selling novelist on both sides of the Atlantic. He was mobbed on the streets of New York, and when he died, his family received condolences from King George V and the then Prime Minister. My word. And uh, Georgie seems to have everything in the cook shack, including, and if you, if you look at our Facebook page, there is video of this, including some wonderful books which relate to Hall Kane. So for instance, we have the Little Man Island by Hall Kane, author of The Manx Man, Deemster, etc. This was um, written in 1894, that's when it was published, and honestly, if you could just look through it, there are some wonderful adverts. It really is a glimpse back in history. This is just incredible. Can't believe Georgie had this on her bookshelf. <laughs> um, but look at these. Talk about the Grand Hotel, Isle of Man, the Peveril Hotel, Derby Castle. It is just wonderful. So uh, we'll have a sneaky peek through that a little bit later. Well, speaking of Georgie, uh, who is the woman who seems to have everything to hand, uh, she has various things to hand. We're going to be cooking some Thing in just a moment. Just tell us first of all what it is we're going to be cooking, Georgie. Well, let's welcome you first to the cook chat. Lovely to have you back again and also to have the wonderful Joanne here who's been here before, done a course. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, we're actually going to start off with the naughty bit and we're going to do a sort of a bread and butter pudding, but my twist on it, and using Noah Bakehouse uh, croissants and we're going to be using Ale and Dairy milk and Isle of Man Cream Rose Cream bit of um, cream cheese, which you could always use the Isle of Man goat's cheese, which I think would be a gorgeous um, addition. Some lovely local eggs, some vanilla, etc. And we're going to put that all in. That's going to be shoved into the agar and we're going to uh, bake that for about 30 minutes. And then we're going to do something very, very healthy, which I think Joanne will <laughs> approve of. <laughs> uh, Joanne, just explain what it is you do. I'm a nutritional therapist. I'm the owner of Life Lessons Nutrition. Um, so what I do is I see people one-to-one -one in clinic. Um, I also do a number of corporate workshops and I've been fortunate enough to, as Georgia said, work up here um, with a bunch of lovely ladies last month and we have another one being talked about at the moment. And I've also done some work with uh, my friend and colleague Esther Jones, who's a yoga therapist. So we've done a couple of courses together, one for some slightly older ladies and we're now looking at doing one for people with fibromyalgia. Wonderful. I just have to ask them, with the focus being on healthy food, do you approve <laughs> of Georgie's croissants, if I can ask that? <laughs> well, I subscribe to the viewpoint that if you're getting it right 80% of the time, you can forget about it. I'm just going to concentrate from now on on that 20%. <laughs> uh, and that's what I might do for all of the time. And, and Georgie, one thing that um, was actually just talked about previously with Stu uh, on Talking Heads was food waste. And he talked about eggs because apparently the three items that we waste most in the UK are eggs, potatoes and bread. Uh, and you gave some good tips about eggs, actually, because mm. I know there's that thing you can do by putting them in water, isn't there? Yes, but I think that what I would do is, um, you know, they come as a sealed little unit and if they are put in the fridge, taken out, put in the fridge, taken out all the time, they may go off. But you know what? Rather than just throw them away if they've gone past their expired date, just crack them and nothing's really going to happen. You might get a bad smell, chuck it over the hedge or down the loo, but otherwise it'll be fine. Just smell everything, smell test. With the potatoes, okay, you're talking about raw potatoes, buy a little bit of compost or go out in the garden and just dig a hole, put it in there. You might get some delicious new potatoes in time for Christmas at this time of year um, or, or even earlier, autumn. And then the other thing was bread. So put the bread in the freezer when you've got time, uh, grate it or whiz it up in a food processor and you've got beautiful breadcrumbs for stuffing chicken or something like that. Can I just check then? I know sometimes there's a bit of a debate about where you should keep your eggs. Yes. Is fridge best in your opinion? I don't. I like to keep my um, eggs out 
in the kitchen because a lot of the egg holders are in the door of the fridge and you are opening the door you're looking for other stuff in the fridge it's keeping getting them warm and then you're closing them and they're going cold again on a counter just at a constant temperature away from the sun there you so go. it's more about consistent temperature really isn't it and speaking of bread as well you were saying as well these lovely no croissants that we've got over here then um, they don't have to be fresh for this dish do they no and in actual fact if you can find some these are a day old that's the, that's better these are lovely noah uh, croissants i'm amazed they didn't all sell out straight away but <laughs> i managed to get some um, some of those and we're going to just soak those in a lovely custard that we're going to be making and it's a really quick uh, pudding, uh, rather delicious, and we're going to shove that in the agar, and hopefully you'll enjoy that later with Joanne. I think you'll produce some lovely fresh fruit. <laughs> yes, yes, certainly. The blueberries and raspberries, with all their antioxidants, will be a fine contribution. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a fancy bread and butter pudding, isn't it? It is, it is, but it looks so good. Um, we did this actually um, on Sunday when I had a barbecue and pizza course, and I don't know if it went down too well. I had a panettone from Christmas, which, you know, seems to keep forever, um, and I said, come on, let's experiment, because I'm always experimenting. Let's put it in the pizza oven. I think it was a little smoky taste, really. So... <laughs> Um, we're going to just put this in, in the oven uh, for 108, at 180 degrees uh, for about 30 minutes and it'll come out and it'll be divine. Wonderful. I think we should get started on that pretty quickly. Shall we just have a little bit of music yeah, first? Yeah, a themed know, tune. Do you know what would go really well, potentially, with this? Maybe a bit of marmalade? I don't know. Would, it, would marmalade go with this, Georgie? I think it would be gorgeous. Should we dot it? Well, we are putting some jam in with this, there but, you, you know, we could put marmalade instead. So I think to celebrate that fact, shall we have Lady Marmalade? Let's do oh. it. <laughs> 